I found 13 work from home jobs that don't require a degree and a lot of these you've probably never heard of. For instance, arbitration subrogation specialist. That's number one on the list. And yeah, you've probably never heard of that. And basically you're gonna be responsible for mediating and solving disputes between insurance companies and individuals. And in this position you make about $55,000 a year and it does not require a college degree. So one company that's hiring is afnicareers.com. And this is a website that hires all over the world, but they're hiring a lot of positions in the United States. For instance, they're hiring for this arbitration subrogation specialist position in Illinois, Texas, and Florida. And all of those are remote jobs. So some of the pros here are it can be a relatively lucrative career. You're going to be working in the finance industry, which tends to be pretty high paying. It is an in-demand skill because expertise in insurance disputes is highly sought after. And there's a lot of career growth because there is potential for advancement within the insurance industry. Some of the cons here are there is a high level of responsibility. It can be potentially stressful and there's a lot of regulatory complexity so you have to be familiar with the laws so overall i'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of ten another one in the insurance industry that is very easy to get without a college degree is going to be a general claims adjuster this is where you're going to be working with the customers of insurance companies and you're going to be assessing insurance claims determining the extent of coverage investigating circumstances and negotiating settlements and it's kind of like being a financial referee ensuring that the insurance game is played fairly and square. And weirdly enough, this position actually dates all the way back to ancient maritime insurance, where they were responsible for assessing the damage to ships and cargo that was insured. Now, general adjusters make about $67,000 a year, and you can find jobs like this on a website like flexjobs.com. So some of the pros here are versatility, good compensation, and job stability. Some of the cons are going to be emotional strain, potential for conflict, and the massive burden for documentation. So overall, I'll also give this one an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be a proposal writer. And this is basically like a persuasive architect that constructs documents that outline services, costs, and benefits to entice clients into partnerships or contracts. And proposal writers make about $68,000 a year. Now, by the way, if I didn't mention it already, all of these jobs are gonna be available mostly remote. And of course, if you don't want a remote job, they're usually available in person as well. So some of the pros of this one are flexibility and also the ability to contribute directly to a business's growth. Some of the cons are deadlines can be tight and rejections can be discouraging. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. Next, let's talk about email marketing specialists. So I know you probably think that no one reads their emails anymore, so email marketing must be dead, but that could not be further from the truth. It's actually still one of the most effective forms of marketing, and usually for every $1 that a company spends on email marketing, they get around $30 to $40 in return. So it's still ridiculously effective. And as an email marketing specialist, you are going to be helping to write and manage those emails. And did you know that the first marketing email was actually sent out in 1978? And it resulted in a whopping $13 million in sales. And email marketing specialists make about $61,000 a year. So some of the pros of this one are it's relatively creative. It's also a field that has a lot of opportunity and you have the ability to directly impact a brand's success. Some of the cons is you do have to balance that creativity with data-driven success. You have to also stay ahead head of a fast-paced and ever-changing digital landscape, and you have to deal with all the changes like spam filters, for instance. But I'm a huge fan of this one. I think email marketing is a highly valuable skill, and I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. And also, I've interviewed a ton of people on this channel that have gotten jobs in digital marketing, and they were all taught by my friend Seth. He's basically the world-renowned expert in getting people from zero knowledge to a job as quickly as possible. And he does have a free masterclass, which I'll put down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below where he'll teach you how you can get into digital marketing and probably answer all the questions that you have about it. So definitely check that out. Next is going to be a medical records technician. So there's a lot of super random like healthcare related jobs that you can actually do remotely and a lot of them pay relatively well and they don't require a college degree. And basically you're going to be responsible for managing, inputting, and organizing crucial patient data ensuring it's all in the right place when needed. And you're kind of like a librarian for hospital records. Now this is an entry level position and you make about $46,000 a year. Some of the pros of this one are you play an essential role in the healthcare industry. It can also be a great way to get your foot in the door working in the healthcare industry too. And there is a high demand for this skill. Some of the cons of this one are it requires strong attention to detail. There's a lot of pressure when it comes to dealing with sensitive patient information. And there is limited room for advancement if you're gonna stay in this career track. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Now, if there's one of these that you haven't heard of before and you appreciate me covering, 
covering it. Or if you just enjoy these types of videos in general, let me know by gently tapping that like button and I'll make a lot more of them. Next one on the list is one you've probably heard of a million times and I'm not gonna spend that much time on it, but that is going to be a computer programmer. Um, also referred to as software developer or software engineer. Of course, there's little differences there, but this is a great career and any list like this would not be complete without mentioning it. You make about $91,000 a year as a computer programmer. You do not need a college degree to get into this, although many people do end up getting it. They either get a computer science degree or a software engineering degree, but you definitely don't need one. So that one, I'll definitely give a 9.5 out of 10. It's harder to get into than many of the other ones on this list, but it's also super high paying and you get a ton of benefits. Next is going to be a technical writer. And this is basically a position where you translate technical gibberish into something that a human being can understand. And technical writers make about $76,000 a year. And there's actually a ton of demand for people who have this skill set. And you absolutely do not need a college degree or previous experience to get into it. So some of the pros here are many of the positions are flexible and you can work from anywhere. And you play a crucial role in making technology accessible for everyone. Some of the cons are it can be very difficult to simplify highly technical jargon and projects might be deadline driven meaning you have to write really quickly and technical writers are among the top three most incredible hybrids on the planet alongside ligers and sporks this one gets an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score next one on the list is going to be an IT project coordinator and basically you're going to be responsible for the organization facilitation and execution of various tasks within an information technology project and you basically have to have a lot of technical know-how but you also have to understand the business side of things as well. And IT project coordinators make about $73,000 a year. And basically you have to have some IT or information technology related skills, but you also have to have some project management skills too. And some of the pros of this one are a lot of the time it is remote. It's also a bridge between technology and business. And there is a high demand for skilled coordinators. Some of the cons of this one are you may have to juggle multiple projects. It also requires precise communication and keeping up with evolving tech trends can be kind of a never ending marathon. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of nine out of 10. Next on the list is going to be a mortgage underwriter. And they're basically the unsung heroes of home financing. And basically you're going to be meticulously inspecting mortgage applications to make sure that people can actually afford the mortgage that they're going for. And mortgage underwriters make about $109,000 a year. So this one is a bit harder to get into. You need to be more familiar with the real estate industry. You can get into it without a college degree. Many people do have college degrees, but you don't need one, but you do have to have some experience. So the the pros of this one are it's kind of a mixture of investigative work and financial knowledge. There's also high earning potential, and this is crucial for the real estate industry in general. Some of the cons here are you have to have a very keen eye for detail. You have to be very accurate, yet you also have to meet deadlines, and you have to stay up to date with the newest regulations. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. Now, by the way, if you want more awesome advice on how to make more money, get a better job, start a side hustle, etc., go ahead and subscribe to this channel, and I'll be uploading a lot of that type of thing. Next is going to be an executive virtual assistant. So basically you're going to be providing high level administrative support to executives within a company. So you're going to be working directly with the head honchos within the company that you work in. This is kind of like being the hand of the king in Game of Thrones, except hopefully you don't get assassinated. But all joking aside, you're going to do a lot of emailing. You're going to be doing a lot of managing of schedules, coordinating emails, handling day-to-day -day tasks, and overall just helping the executive to ensure smooth business operations. And there are some executive assistants that are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. For instance, the executive assistant for Richard Grasso, who's the former chairman of the New York Stock Exchange, was paid $240,000 a year. So if you do a good job in this role and if you work for the right person, you can make incredibly good money. But generally speaking, executive virtual assistants make about 65,000. So some of the pros here are this can be a very insightful role. You can learn a ton from it. You're also going to develop a diverse skill set and there's going to be incredible networking opportunities. Some of the cons are it can be very high stress and you might have to work extended hours. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. Next on the list is going to be a meeting planner. And you're basically gonna be a director of events responsible for organizing and executing conferences, webinars, and virtual meetings. Now this can also be referred to as event planning. And there are event planners that make over a million dollars a year. For instance, Alicia makes over a million dollars a year working for her company, Ace 
least it events. But generally speaking, meeting planners make about $62,000 a year. Some of the pros for this are, especially lately, there's a high demand for virtual events, and there's a lot of opportunity for creativity. Some of the cons are you have to be great at multitasking, and you have to be great at adaptability because chances are something is gonna go wrong. So overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. Next is going to be a help desk analyst. And basically, you are going to be helping people fix technical glitches and technical issues within a company. Now, you might be working directly with customers or other people who work in the company. And help desk analysts make about $58,000 a year. Now, some of the pros here are you get to do problem solving basically all day. You get to help other people out. So they usually come to you with a big problem that they have, then you help them out. And that can be pretty satisfying. And you get to learn a diverse skill set. And one of my friends who works in IT and he got all the way up to the point where he's making like $250,000 a year said that this role was actually his favorite out of all the jobs he's ever done. Now, some of the cons here are it can be relatively repetitive. Asking people if they tried turning it on and off again can get pretty boring. You also are going to be constantly exposed to technology. So staring at a computer screen all the time and that can cause technical fatigue. And if something big goes wrong, there can be a lot of pressure put on you to fix it. But overall, this one is really good, especially at the entry level, super easy to get into jobs. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. And next is going to be a travel consultant. And this is basically a professional who helps individuals plan and book vacation and travel experiences. And you're gonna be providing expert advice on accommodations and activities that you can do in certain areas. And funny enough, this career has actually been around since the early 1900s. And travel consultants make about $62,000 a year. So you can see why this one would be so valuable if you've ever traveled internationally, for instance. There's always some weird thing that countries need. Some countries are worse than others, of course. And then on top of that, it just makes it a lot easier if someone's familiar with the destination that you're traveling to. Because if you go there and you already know all the really good tourist spots and you already know all the really good restaurants to go to and the really good hotels to stay at, that makes your entire trip so much smoother. Now, some of the pros of this one are there's a lot of flexibility in working hours. There's an opportunity to turn your passion for travel into an income and you get to help people create memorable experiences. For instance, if you help someone book a wedding. Some of the cons of this one are building a clientele can take time. Of course, you can work for another company that does travel consulting, but a lot of the time people do this as a freelance or business type thing eventually. And keeping up with the ever-changing travel regulations can be a headache. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Now, if you haven't checked it out already, I did a video on the 21 highest paying work from home jobs. I had some of the absolute best ones out there in that video, and you can look at that by clicking right here.